Hello and welcome to the lab for chapter 1, Static Route with Multipath. This lab is going to demonstrate the use of Wireshark and source pings and how we can use static routes to vary a route to the same basic LAN destination. With this, uh, the good design of the practice for this lab is to show that we can have a destination. Let's say we, we make a client LAN. Uh, 172.16.00/26. Okay, and we're going to DHCP some devices. We can be smart about our DHCP range and specify that clients 1 through 6 get voice, 17 through 31 get video, and 33 through 54 get data. Altogether, they can comprise a slash 26 network, which is basically saying I can go from um, 0 through 63. Okay, that's what we're showing here because. We can go beyond a little bit in data, that's fine. So if we look at this, um, assuming that, we can basically say, okay, clients that pertain to this voice range should take the upper path, the video range should take the middle path, and the data range should take the lower path. And as far as traffic receipt router goes, um, if I'm sourcing the ping from this interface, I should take the upper path from 17 interface, the middle path, and the 33 interface, the lower path. If I choose not to source the ping, the traffic generator router will choose its own source interface from one of the 10 networks. And I have to have, be able to return that traffic from traffic receipt router should have a route to these 10 networks back as well. So I'm looking at a minimum of basically three stack routes on traffic gen. And, and probably four on traffic receipt because I want three stack routes plus a default route to capture any of the sources if they're 10. So I can have a stack route on traffic receipt pointing to this guy, this guy, and this guy. It's three. And if it sources it from anywhere in 10, it should return it based on the default route. Let's look at this uh, show IP, uh, show running config. This section uh, IP route. This is a traffic generation source. These are my uh, these are my uh, stack routes on traffic gen router, traffic receipt router. If I open that one up, show running config uh, section IP route. If I could spell it out right. Okay, there you go. We have our three. You know, if we if we source the pings, we have our three source returns, and then the all alpha all else fails we have our return capture there let's go ahead and use uh, use some debug options now to test our skill at how we can view the pathways through a network let's go to traffic gen ra router and let's go ahead and ping uh, from traffic gen let's try to check the upper route there through voice and let's go ahead and ping uh, let's do a ping 172 dot 16.0.1. The idea is I should be able to ping anywhere in this range. I don't have more loopbacks, so except for one. But the way I wrote my static routes, I should be able to ping anywhere from one through six. Uh, I just don't have the clients enabled yet. So I, I need my only host active is zero one. And let's go ahead and source that from loopback zero. Okay. And I have success, that's great, but it doesn't tell me anything about the route that I chose. So let's do a debug IC, IP ICMP. Let's go ahead and reissue that ping, up arrow, up arrow. Okay, great, but it still doesn't tell me my route. What I need to do is maybe combine this. I know it works, I got 100% success. Let's go ahead and debug uh, IP packet, debug. IP packet. Let's issue that ping again. And there's our debug. So I have the two debugs. Here's the ICMP debug where you see the ICMP. You know, blah, blah, blah. There's, you know, four or five of these. Okay. So a uh, normal ping, we send it, uh, what, four times and we have five ping responses. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Here's five ICMPs. Okay. One, two, three, four, and five. Okay, those are that's the ICMP ping. The debug packet was this information. If you look at it, it really gives us a lot of insight on what's going on. Uh, I'm going to look at. Uh, I'm going to show you my serial links there, and we're going to go back to traffic gen router. 
if you look at this, it says, uh, you know, I'm sending it on my 000, and a return reply came from 000 as well. So it basically says, okay, I'm sending it this way, and my return reply was from this guy. Watch what happens if um, I now do the same ping, but I forget to source it. And right now, my current source is uh, 192.168.1.1. See S equals. Okay, that's my local source. And it pertains pretty much to my um, loopback. And if I do this, uh, wow, look at that source. It says I'm sourced from 10.001. It just chose an interface. Okay. And in this case, I chose 10.001. That's my local source. Okay. I got back the reply, but this time the reply is going to come back. If you look at this, uh, let's see here. Oh, look at that. It came back from S001. Well, why is that? My stack routes for traffic receipt basically has, um, if I'm sourcing it from my loopbacks, I take the exact route back that it came in on. So if I source it from, I shouldn't say that. If I source it from loopback zero, I'm going to take the upper path, zero, zero, one. Make sure I save this. If I source it from loopback zero, one, I'm going to, I'm going to reply to the middle route. And if I source it from loopback zero, two, I'm going to reply via the lower route. All else, make sure you have a capture bucket. It says, okay, if, if you don't know where, if it, one of the uh, stack routes doesn't have the source in it, the, the capture bucket says, okay, just return it through S02. Okay, so when I look at that traffic again, if I do a traffic gen, you notice how it doesn't say I'm sourcing it from S02. It says I'm, I'm receiving it. It says received. That's how you know we were getting it. I'm receiving from S01. If you look at where S01 is, it's on my video router. Sure enough, it's taking that pathway back. Boom, hits video. S01 comes to me. So remember, these are pretty much locally significant. They're not going to show you it on a remote side. It's sourced from that. Um, it came from my immediate neighbor from S01. So basically, the, the traffic flow is this. If I didn't source the ping from a loopback, I go from here to voice to the appropriate client, and then it sends it back through the middle route. So this is basically asymmetric balancing of routes. You know, it could be useful. What if I do this, and I'll try some funky. If I send it by the upper route, I could return it by the lower route. All I have to do is source the ping from a, a loopback 02. So on my traffic gen, ba ba boom and I've, I I could read this right. It says, you know, I'm 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 sending it by S00, good, the upper pathway, and I'm receiving it by S02, good. That's my lower router. We could peek, sneak a peek. That's my data's pathway. So yeah, it's sure enough, it's going this route. And yeah, we could easily test this. Uh, let's do a capture on the serial link up top, and let's do a capture on the serial link on the bottom. So if you're reading Wireshark, captures are pretty straightforward. Just name your router something meaningful. That way Wireshark will also um, have that capture in its title. So look at this. Uh, it says traffic gen to data. Okay, that's on the bottom. Traffic gen to voice. That's on the top. Okay, and right now there's nothing. I'm going to go ahead and do the same ping. Let's source the ping from the same address. So I'm expecting to go from top and then return by the bottom. Boom. Okay. Let's do the traffic gen of voices, the top route. Here we go. ICMP echo requests. There's four of them. And let's go to the Wireshark on the bottom and refresh that. There's four of those in reply. So sure enough, that, that's proof that we sent, you know, through the top route and returned through the bottom route. One last thing, uh, if I don't need, if I don't have Wireshark capability, let's say, uh, you know, I'm not running GNS or I'm not, uh, they don't have Wireshark capable on serial interface. 
I could use the same thing in a router. It's just a little bit more difficult to read. Uh, what we could do is um, let's go to a router. Uh, let's go to voice. And one thing on voice, uh, let's go and debug IP packet. Let's see what's going on. I'm going to same ping. Doo -doo -doo. Oh, lo and behold, there's nothing going through voice. It's not that it's nothing going through there. It's just that on transactional traffic, when you send it, the Cisco router, if, if Cisco Express forwarding is enabled, you don't see that transactional traffic. So we have to clear it. We basically have to clear it in two spots. We have to clear it in CEF. And if I do this, show IPCF, this is Cisco Express forwarding. You actually don't have to look things up in your routing table once you pass the initial route. It has it in its content memory, and this is a fast way to get packets through. So you CEF in a production environment is very good. But if you want to trace traffic, you basically have to clear that CEF and then clear the route cache on the interface. So I know it's, this is enabled. If I do a show running config, it says, hey, I have IPCF enabled. That's a good thing. The routers, you know, the newer routers have that feature and basically makes your packets looked up faster. So everything you learned in, you know, Cisco 101 or 102 is basically a lie because we teach you that everything is looked up in a routing table. But really, this, this functionality uh, prevents that. Once it's initially looked up in a routing table, it gets stored in content memory and then it's looked up faster. So let's like take a look at... Um, Let's turn it off. Configure terminal, no IPCF. Let's do it again. And we have debug packet on. And there, I, I don't see much output. Look at that. I mean, what's, what is it with that? Not much output. It's not what I'm expecting. Let's go to this. Configure terminal. And uh, let's take a look at this. Let's say uh, clear IPCF everything, or whatever the word was, prefix statistics enter oh, nothing there what's happening is your interface is a route caching too so let's go to configure terminal uh, interface 000 no IP route cache it's French or something cache um, enter interface 001 no IP route cache Shade. Exit. Exit. Do the clear CF again. Let's see. Show IPCF. See if there's anything in there. No. Just for safety's sake, I'm going to clear it. Clear IPCF. Everything prefix statistics. So what I just did, I turned off the route cache on both my serial interfaces. And I turned off Cisco Express forwarding. I have debug IP packet on. I'm crossing my fingers that this is going to work. That I'm going to show all the traffic going through the router. Boom. Genius, right? Uh, so we have uh, incoming traffic, um, incoming on 000. My outbound route says I'm forwarding out. This is my actual forwarding database. This is awesome. This is my Cisco um, routing table working. It says, you know, I forwarded, according to my forwarding database table, um, out 001. Amazing. Okay. So this is how we can look at now. What's going to happen in a production environment if you do a debug IP packet is your router is going to fly through and it's, you know, it should give you a warning say, don't do this. Um, but in this scenario, I have really no other traffic. Um, you know, say it's early in the morning on my network and no one's using it too much. Um, I can I can capture this output now. In a real router, you might want to debug this and send it to an SMTP, uh, you know, an SMTP server to capture those files so you can chew in them later. And look at that um, and basically um, that completes this lab I show you two stack routes make sure you, this this topology of stack routes enabled throughout the network and the only thing you could use in this lab are stack routes so go ahead and configure it get used to IPCEF get used to Wireshark get used to how to debug get used to how to uh, source a ping and get familiar with how we can design a network appropriately given one mask of a slash 26 if I provision clients for certain ranges um, I could reply based on those uh, serial interfaces. That's it for this lab, and good luck, and look forward to the next lab.